Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna to do a sketch of a thistle and I took this photo um, when I was walking the dog last night. And I wanna, um, I wanna show you something because when you're out, when you're taking your own reference photos, I encourage you to take a few shots because um, sometimes you'll get a crisp image, other times you won't. Um, especially if you're walking a, a dog, they can pull while you're taking a photo. So just, you know, try a few and uh, you'll get one that will be usable. Like this one turned out really crisp and that's what I'm going to use today. I'm going to sketch on with a color erase pencil and you can use whatever you want, regular pencil or even a watercolor pencil. And then we're going to use watercolor markers to, uh, to color in this illustration. I've been having a lot of fun with them lately and I thought it would be really... Um, be really fun to to use those. So I'm going to start off with kind of an oval shape. I'm going to zoom, you know, I'm going to be a little bit zoomed in. Really light on this though. And then we're going to take at the top of that oval shape, we're going to almost make it look like a vase. Okay. And then we're going to give it kind of a curved line there. And then we're going to just very loosely indicate where our thistle blossoms are going. We don't need a lot of information here because it's a very simple shape. Um, you can also put some of the thorns, or I guess they might be seeds, they're probably seeds actually because we have a thistle feeder, that, that's got to be the seeds that are here on this ball. And as the, um, the, seed, the uh, thorns or seeds get in the center, they're going to be much shorter, they're going to kind of poke up in the front. And then they're just going to kind of just be little short dots towards the bottom because they're foreshortened and you don't see them all. Now we're going to bring that down to the stem. You can see it tapering down. Oh, by the way, you can change on your phone if you go uh, into settings and then you go to display. Then you can scroll down and you can change the like uh, timeout, like how long your phone will stay awake, your screen will stay awake for. And that is really handy when you like if you like to sketch from your phone. I never was a big fan of it, but then I started, um, like in July when I was doing World Watercolor Month, I found myself on the, um, on my, like, my deck painting a lot, and I didn't want to go inside and find a reference image, and I might not be able to see much from where I was, so I found that I really enjoyed using my phone then, um, and I just needed to figure out how to make the screen not <laughs> go to sleep, and it was pretty easy. The only thing, uh, the only other thing is I accidentally would delete photos because whenever I'd like touch the phone to wake it up, I'd an inadvertently end up deleting it, hitting the delete button. And if that happens, all you do is go in albums and then you can find recently deleted. <laughs> At least on a Samsung uh, or an Android type phone, I should say. I don't know how it is on, a, on Apple. So when you've got a fairly simple design like this, you want to really just go looking for the interesting stuff. I'm going to go ahead and clip my book here. It's starting to get pretty full. Oh, I got some, got some crud on that side. Uh, now come on you. Um, it's starting to get kind of full, so it wants to close on me. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to take our, you know what? I'm actually going to move this over here because this is just, that's it's just very awkward for me to be looking at the uh, looking at it like that. I'm using Windsor and Newton watercolor markers. I've had them for I've had well actually I bought some about six years ago and did a review on them and then I recently was contacted by Windsor and Newton and they wanted to send me the new Pro Marker ones and I said well hey if they're like the old um, watercolor ones I'd be thrilled uh, because they just call them Pro Marker watercolor ones instead of like the like the, I can't remember what they're probably for. I think just watercolor markers by Windsor Newton, and uh, they are. They seem to be the same. I actually compared them to the the old ones I had. These are the old ones I have here, and these are the new ones. Um, they all have pigment information. They all have. Uh, they all blend out just as well. They're wonderful. So I was pretty pretty thrilled with that. I'll do a full like update. Um, oh, I might even record it after this because I have a bunch of little artworks I've done with it. So this is dioxazine violet. And it uses the same pigment numbers that you would be accustomed to seeing. And uh, they've got a bullet tip and also a brush tip. And I do like the brush tip. This is one of the old style ones. You can tell by the silver band, the silver um, barrel and the uh, the stripes. And I've seen, a, well, I started to see those markers like really cheap. This, like, maybe it was like last summer. Recently I was seeing 
them really cheaply like on Amazon and I'm like oh no are they discontinuing them that was my first thought and I'm like what a shame because Winsor Newton does discontinue a lot of products if they're not selling well especially if they're kind of like new experiments they've done uh, so I was really kind of bummed and hoping that wasn't the case and uh, I think they just rebranded them because they bought pro markers so I think they just wanted to put all the markers under the same name but they seem to be the same quality so if you see one sold like this it's old, older stock but um they were I mean I think they were they were released around 2015 2016 so they're not that old but you know just to, just to let you know I have noticed them they the older ones seem to be more expensive but I think it's because they come in a tin instead of if you're buying a set they come in a tin as opposed to um coming in a like coming in a plastic they come in this right now they come in these like plastic things if you're buying a set so it's not really anything I'm going to save you know, I guess you could use it to carry it around, but I don't know. It's nothing I'm going to hang on to. And let's see. I'm using Hooker's Green Dark, I believe it is. Or it might just be Hooker's Green. Hooker's Green Dark. I'm going to use that up here where it's a little bit more um, shadowed because the flower is casting a shadow. I took these photos, I would say, well actually I've wanted to, this plant is so pretty, it's on the side of the road, and I try not to pick um, thistles because there's not a ton of them growing, and plus I know the butterflies really um, enjoy the thistle, so I don't want to like, I try not to pick berries and, um, and flowers and stuff like that to draw, I try to just take a photo or draw them sitting next to them because I don't want to uh, disrupt the environment. Anyway, there's not a lot of thistles around, and so I wanted to get a photo of these, but like the first, when I first spotted them, somebody was out mowing their lawn, it was right on the kind of the edge, on the, well, it was right next to the road, I guess it was probably, you know, not their property, but like, you know, the public town easement or whatever, but still, it's like, I didn't want this guy to think I was some sort of weirdo taking photos right outside his house, so I had to wait <laughs> until, um, until there was, uh, there was nobody around, I didn't want, you know, didn't want to be that weirdo person. Because I don't know who lives there, which is really weird because I know pretty much everyone that lives, you know, in the area, but they're fairly new people. Um, these, this is lemon, which is a pretty weak lemon, actually. I should see what pigment it is. Um, so these actually use PY3, hmm, like a hand say yellow. Um, these actually use your customary pigments, but you will find that, like, if it's a pigment that's really heavily thick and granulating, they're probably going to use something else because um, it's got to go through a fiber nib, okay? So they're going to be more transparent than, they're going to be like your most transparent colors, basically. So if you love transparent watercolors, which I know a lot of you do, I do, um, you're going to really, really enjoy these. I'm going to not put a background in because you, can you see, because there's so much, and in nature there's often, I'm just going to scoot over a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. In nature, there's often not a lot of contrast, just like there in this picture. You know, if I guess if I wanted to be really, um, good about it I guess get a really good picture I could have brought like a piece of um like poster board or something and set it behind it when I photographed it but I wouldn't be able to do that with a dog and also I'd probably get myself arrested for stalking or something hanging out <laughs> by somebody's house trying to photograph things um but like if it was in my own yard if I grabbed like a uh, a piece of poster board that probably would be really really nice I don't think I want to do too many little spikes out with a marker because I'll probably just drag it out with a brush. Now I did grab a water brush because I, before I was using a regular brush with these, but I'm thinking, you know, this is, this is the time for a water brush. I think a water brush is really going to be excellent. Now this is, these colors are also pretty concentrated, so I don't want to go too crazy with the marker because I want to make sure I don't have too much, um, too much pigment. Gosh, these are fun though. Um, I don't know why I don't use them that, that often, because I had those, I think, you know what, it might have been, because they were expensive, when they first came out, they were $5.99 each, and that's pretty much what everybody was selling them for, for, and then Jerry's put them on sale, I think it was Jerry's, and, um, and I had a coupon, that was back in, back in the day when you could use, um, coupons on sale price items as well, I think the manufacturers put a kibosh to that, but anyway, um, because like you can barely, if, if you can find a coupon, it bar will barely ever work on um, on manufacturers' products, let alone sale prices. Uh, so anyways, I was able to get mine for about, 
I think $2.69, maybe $3 a piece. So that was still a pretty good deal, but you know, it was a lot broker broker then. And um and I think maybe they got a little precious. I was kind of worried about using them up. And now, but the price, I mean, I think now to buy them at like Blick, they're like $4 a piece, or the sets I think are about $36, a set of 12. So, you know, that brings the price down to about $3 each. That's not too bad. And they do last. I mean, you can even like, um, on the old ones, you could pull the end off like that. You can on this two, these two, but it's just harder. And then you could drop in a few drops of water if, you know, maybe you left a cap off or, you know, something like that. I think I also want to get a little bit of yellow ochre in here and there. Um, this is the brush end. Maybe just a little bit up here. And you can see how the colors want to mix when I do that. In fact, I could probably pull out some of the thorns like that and just leave them because I do like that. I'm using the, the brush straight up and down, the tip, the marker straight up and down so I don't, uh, so I get a nice fine point. Well, I think I like using the yellow ochre just to drag out the, uh, the colors there. Oh, this is, these are so fun, guys. I was, and I think part of the reason I was like, well, what are these for? Because, you know, I'm not going to travel with these because I would find that a little cumbersome to have all those markers versus like having, um, uh, versus having just a small little tin of paint. So that seems much more convenient for me, but you could do all your drawing on location with like a pocket full of these pens and then you could come home and you could do, um, you could add the water because you can reactivate them quite later in the, in the day. You know, you don't have to do it right away. All right, so I've got a water brush here and I'm gonna start applying some water. Let me know in the comments below if you ever use your phone for reference, uh, reference materials. I'm gonna start up here and I'm just gonna very gently start flicking water. Just basically starting my brush in the, um, in the center of the, the flower and just flicking out. I'm not going to try to liquefy every little bit of, um, of pigment there because I want to have a variety. And one thing, probably the biggest tip I can give you about these things is don't overwork. In fact, I wonder if I should slide those off and maybe, um, maybe tip this a bit so that when I'm doing this, you can kind of see how my brush is hitting the paper. Let me look at my thing. Hopefully I didn't hit that. I do that and then I don't look at my paper and then I end up <laughs> I end up putting my uh, my brush down somewhere. All right, so I'm gonna squeeze my brush off over my napkin, make sure that water's flowing because it wasn't uh, it wasn't flowing for me. I don't know what make of brush this is. I don't see. It's kind of that. I think it's that kind of generic green um, capped one you see from every budget in every budget watercolor set. What I started doing because. Um, I was thinking the next time I teach a watercolor workshop at a stamp convention, I think I will uh, use water brushes. And so I was like, oh, I wonder if I need to buy any or if I wonder if I have enough because of all of the budget, um, all of the budget art supplies that I have. And so I started like, as I came across them, putting them in this drawer and I have like an entire drawer full of water brushes. So I think I'm going to be all set for my next class <laughs> or even when I do a project graduation. Um, event like do the do an art room for project grad that would be a lot easier a lot less you know clean up than like dumping and rinsing out buckets and the kids do that and my students will do that like do that clean oh I think that looks so pretty and textured just as it is don't you think um but I think that would certainly save some aggravation uh especially for like if it's not like a real in-depth watercolor technique class it's more of like a um like a project class Ooh, baby, I like that. Okay, so again, I'm doing the same technique here, dragging out some of the pigment. When you're using a water brush, don't try to get more water over your painting. Go to a napkin and squeeze, or go to your palette and squeeze out a little bit of water. That way you're not gonna get a blob that you can't control. Hopefully that's showing up. I think this is really pretty. And this is gonna be, you know what? Do this on a on a postcard or a greeting card. That would be so pretty. And you're not putting a ton of water down. So, I mean, you definitely want, a, for these markers to work well, you want a type of paper 
that is going to respond well to water and have a little sizing in it. So watercolor paper, Bristol board, mixed media paper, those papers are going to be excellent choices. Watercolor greeting cards and watercolor postcards are great. Hanna Mule makes a very affordable tin of watercolor postcards. I think they're like 15 or $16 on Amazon and you get like 30, I'm thinking. And those are great to stick, just stick those in your bag or, you know, maybe if you like to paint upstairs, you know, have them on the coffee table or, you know, stash them in a drawer or something nearby. I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. I feel like it should uh, carry down. One thing you have to worry about, though, with these, not really worry, but it does, you do end up getting some hard edges sometimes because you push the pigment to the outside. Now, my goal is for it to be lighter in the middle. Now, if I got it too dark, which I actually think this is pretty good, um, I can go, whoops, and uh, that's a little pronounced. Um, I can go and I can scrub it out and I can lift it off. So that's uh, that's another option we have here. Now, if I think I have too much pigment on my brush from that dark hookers green, I can just, to clean my brush, all I gotta do is squeeze a little bit of water out and just wipe it on a rag or on, um, or on my cloth. Now, if you're painting outdoors, you can take like an old tube sock and you can like cut, um, you cut off the toe and you can fold it over your wrist and you can use that and just kind of like dab on your wrist. By the way, somebody asked what I did to my wrist. It was a dog scratch. And uh, then it was aggravated by white water after and was completely healed now. Um, but I did that a couple of weeks ago and I had a video just went up that I'd filmed like right after I did that. So there were some concerned, some concerned friends. <laughs> I think it was a dog scratch. Could have been an oven burn, but I don't think I burnt myself on the oven recently. <laughs> but man, that dog, sometimes she gets wound right up. And hence you can see why it takes me a few shots to get a reference photo when I'm out walking the dog. I got a really nice one of a, um, the, it was a, the prettiest moth. It was very kind of plain looking, but it looked kind of like um, birch bark. That's like how the, the moth looked like birch bark. It was really... Um, it was really pretty and but it was on if it was on a birch tree I never would have noticed it but it was on this just like dark brown barked tree in the woods this morning and so I grabbed I did take a few shots to get a nice clear one but it, I think it came out really well and the dog was was uh she actually was being pretty still she was I think she, she had I wouldn't have noticed it if she hadn't been looking at a squirrel or something that had run up the tree and I'm like oh, look at that I didn't disturb that moth there could have been a phantom squirrel. Squirrel. Sometimes it seems like the dog sees things that aren't there. All right. Now this would be pretty. Also, if you want to do it like uh, with like maybe metallics on black paper, and then you could use like metallic colored pencils to pull up some of the highlights. That would be really pretty. I just think that's really lovely, just the way it is. Okay. So now what I'm going to do. You could go with colored pencils if you want, but I think I'm going to take advantage of this yellow ochre now. Here, the highlights on the, our thorns are white. You know, they're 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 reflecting the light a lot, and um, we're seeing them because they're standing out from the the green background of the grass there in the ditch. So, what I want to do actually is I'm going to do in yellow ochre, so they'll stand out against my white paper. So, sometimes you got to make um, choices like that with your, um, you know, when you're doing your art. Now, obviously, this wouldn't be a really accurate botanical because of that. And actually, if, I guess if you want to do a real accurate botanical, you'd probably pick the flower. And um, I like to leave no trace with my art, if at all possible, unless it was like a huge, you know, there was something where I could see there was a lot of a certain plant or something like daisies. I had, had so many daisies growing in the, in the backyard um, earlier this summer. I could do that and not feel too bad about it. But something where there's just a couple, I certainly don't want to, don't want to take that. And I'm, I'm sure I could go to um, go online and find a really accurate depiction, but there's just something fun about like soup to nuts, taking your painting, you know, start to finish and making it just the way you want. Now, actually, what I think I'm going to do here is because that yellow ochre seems a little bold. I think I want to soften that a bit, but I think my water brush might be a little, like not the best job, not the best tool for the job. So what I think I'm going to do is actually take a small brush. Let me see. How about this little Da Vinci? And then I think I got a little dish of water here and I also have a 
little palette. And what I think I'll do, squeeze a little, squeeze, scribble a little yellow ochre there, maybe do a little bit of, oh yeah, maybe do a little bit of green, do a little bit of that purple. And that's gonna give us a really neutral color. When you cap these, these pro markers back on, whether it's the watercolor ones or the alcohol ones, be very careful when you put that cap on that you do not damage the nib because if you hastily slam that cap on there, you could damage the nib. It's one thing I've noticed with them. Like I love yellow ochre and dioxazine violet. Look at that color. Isn't that pretty? And I just got this little number two Da Vinci. Actually, it's a number two Da Vinci, but it's pointed, so it acts more like a number one. So if you're trying to um, do this with what you have at home, go for, I'm adding a little bit of that green in there, go for a number one. I went with a firmer golden tackle on brush because I thought it'd be easier for me to get those little thorns and keep them fine. The downside is, that I have to reload fairly frequently because it does not hold a lot of water. It's just your typical golden tack on. Da Vinci's a good brush though. Um, I don't think you could really go wrong with anything by like Da Vinci or Princeton. Royal and Land Nickel makes both uh, inexpensive, great quality brushes and also it does make some, some cheaper ones. So, you know, if you're paying like, I'd say if you're paying like over $3 a brush from Royal and Land Nickel, you're gonna get a good brush. But they do have some really, really budget ones that would not be quite as good. But the price will really be a giveaway on, or should be. Do a little bit more of that purple. Oh. I like to use the brush tip to put color in my palette. Maybe I will switch to a liner though because that will hold a little bit more. This is the number one right liner from Creative Mark. Plus it will give me a different shape. And yes, it's going to be darker than darker. It's going to be more neutralized. I think I might need to let that dry and do some on top of the um, thistle as well. I'm trying to go over some of the yellow ones because they seem a little bit too yellow. I think I'm gonna dry this and then we'll come back and put a few more thorns on there. We can put highlights on there if you want. We'll see what it needs when we get back. I went ahead and scribbled some more of the violet and the yellow ochre in my little mixing well here. This palette's from Amazon, by the way. It's really uh, cute, it's just called a rose palette. I have it in my, um, under all my videos, I have like a, there's a link to my Amazon page. It's just products I recommend. I try to update it every couple of weeks because sometimes things are no longer available. Or if I know that the quality on something has changed, then I like to go in and uh, either make a note of it or, um, or remove it if I don't trust that it's the same, the same quality. But uh, yeah, these little ceramic palettes are so fun. And I like this shape because it's really handy if you like to do markers or if you like to do, um, if you like to do like liquid watercolors or um, inks. You can also work onto the damp paper with your markers if you want to, with these anyway. They seem to do pretty well with that. They're very, they're very well, uh, they're very well filled. I usually don't like that technique personally. I feel like it, just like using a colored pencil, like watercolor pencil on a, on a dry, on, on a wet paper, how it just kind of like makes the color go down so dark and then it's difficult if you do decide you want to lift. Remember, just kind of dabs towards the center. Then you can flick up more, um, more texture on the edges and at the top. And then I can also go in with the hooker's green um, I can work over that. If I was to go on wet paper here, and there are some wet areas just because of the, uh, 
the the th thorns I just put down. If I was to go over that on dark paper, I could. Um, oh my gosh, talking. If I was to go over damp paper with the marker, um, it would feather a bit. So if you want a sharp line, you want to do that on dry paper. Oh, when you're taking reference photos with your phone, try to avoid using the flash because that's going to give you weird hot spots and it's just not going to look as natural. So like this time of night, this was like between five and six, I think. Usually, well, no, it's probably closer to six because it would have been after supper. Uh, you know, try to go out when you do have enough, enough light, but that type of day, you know, about an hour before sunset is be a beautiful time for doing photographs. It's a great time to go to the Audubon Park or go, you know, Botanical Gardens, go and get those beautiful photos. You can get some interesting shadows. There, I like that. I don't think there's any other shadows I want to add. Oops, I forgot to turn off the dehumidifier and I can hear that now. You probably can too, in case you're wondering what that is. And I'm going to grab a little bit more of that hooker's green. Because hooker's green is also a little bit, it seems like a little bit less saturated than the sap green, so it just looks nice in the shadows, gives a nice depth. Okay, if you want to soften anything, <clears throat> you can go ahead and do that with your water brush. Get it flowing. You can also get it flowing in your palette if you have one handy, if you're using, if you're using one. But that's what's kind of fun about these is that you can soften it. Now, if you're doing this, if you're watching this and you're like, oh, I don't have that brand, I'd like to try it. Hey, try whatever watercolor markers you have or water-based markers, I should say. Any water-based markers, if you're using watercolor paper or Bristol, will probably give you a similar result. These do lift extremely easy. In fact, so easy that it can be difficult to glaze with them. But um, yeah, try with what you have. And if what you have isn't going to cut it, then you can always... You know, you can always purchase a set of these or purchase some individually. Now, I'm going to hit this real quick with the, <clears throat> the heat tool, only because I want to make sure that I'm not going to have any soft spots in my paper that could be bothered by my pencil. Now, to be honest, I think this looks pretty good the way it is. I don't really feel like I need to add more to it. However, I also know it's very easy to get... Um, to get way too much uh, dark when you're using the watercolor pencils, especially first couple times. So I've got this uh, very opaque pencil. It's a Derwent drawing pencil. It's one of the old school ones. I just recently came across this and like, oh yeah, I'll use that. And I'm going to start by adding a little bit of white onto the stock because the stock is quite a bit whiter. I think part of it is the lighting, but it definitely does have some lighter aspects. So I want to get some of that in there. I am turning my pencil and working on the edge of it a little bit for this area to help me retain the point. Now this would be extremely effective if I was on a toned paper or if I had done a background on this, but I really, uh, I just didn't feel like a background. I wanted it to be more, um, more fresh. And then I can also go in and I can add some... Little bits of like just highlights on some of the seeds or thistles. I want to call them thorns because they're kind of thorny, but they're seeds. Oh. And then uh, if you want a little bit of highlight in the fluff, you can do that too. really all I'm going to do to this. I think that's really all it needs and this was a really fun um, really fun little project to do. I hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions you can go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Um, I guess that's all I have for you today. It's a fun little project and give it a try with whatever watercolor markers you have. I will link these down below in case you're looking for these. Um, but yeah, the best supplies to use are the ones you already have but if you need some then you know might as well get the ones that work really well. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting.